Final, final question, you know, final point on, we're going through 10 points at a time here, but final point here. When you say money and politics is bad, again, I ask you, Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money, after all. It's just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? When you take money from Al Jazeera, okay. does that make you a hooker so for the Qataris? How does that awesome, work? Can I, that was an awesome conflation. Okay, we were talking about money in politics and how money is not speech when you give it as a campaign donation and you turn it around to a business investment. You know, in a business investment, it has nothing to do with speech. Money is money. They gave us an investment so because they believed in our business. Good. That and has nothing to do with politics. That's great. And you think the government is in the business of regulating so, business. So, so if the government is in the business of regulating business, what would be the problem with the government telling Buddy Romer he is not allowed to invest in your business? No, that has, no, no, those are two different issues. No problem, no problem. No, it's, it's, one thing is to say, hey, let's set reasonable limitations on what can happen around elections, which is, again, what most developed Western countries do. So, and they have different versions of that rule. There's uh, ads you can run, uh, you can't run ads within a certain period of time. You have public financing versus private financing. Those are rules around an election. That is a completely different issue than the government saying randomly you can and you can't invest in businesses. Why? So you're conflating those two issues that have nothing to do with one another. Why? So let, let, let's just, uh, we're, Wait, we're, what does why mean? Because it's Those a, are because, two, hey, it, why, hey, you because, know, you believe in education, well, so why don't you quick. believe in healthcare? Because it's, a, because it's a free country and I get to spend my money wherever I damn well please. All right. So as we're coming to the close here, we're going to do one okay, more. I got to ask him. I got to ask him. All right, very quick, so very you, quick. You damn though. well please. Okay, so when the Koch brothers or Bloomberg or Soros puts in hundreds of millions of dollars into elections, you think, well, I just do them because they're good guys and they want, and they're just, they're, they damn well please buying all those politicians. Or you think, no, the politicians would never be affected by hundreds of millions of dollars in legalized bribes. Okay. And you can't just spend your money anywhere you want. Of course there are rules. You can't bribe people. Right. There's many things you can't do with your money. And one of those should be bribing politicians, but we made it legal. Chank. So I'm curious what your opinion on that is. So, okay, do you so, think that they're just golly chucks? So, uh, Chank, they just mean well? And Chank, you're a lawyer, so you know that bribery requires two parties to the bribe. If I give money to a politician, there must be something in return. If there is no quid pro quo, there is no bribery. You think there's nothing in return? Well, you, have you think the politicians don't no, do those I think, favors? I think, no, I think very often there is something in return. But I want you to point me to the things that are in return, not just say that all spending on politics ought to be forbidden except for the Young Turks. No, that is of course not what we say. If, 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 you, if you want to get money out of politics and then you said the Young Turks cannot donate money to politicians, I'd say, of course, that's the whole point of getting money out of politics. Wait, so, so, okay. so, 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 Chang. so this idea that, you, Chang, well, hey, on. what? Come on. It's so disingenuous. If, even if you're a Republican and you're a conservative, you think there isn't crony capitalism? You think that that $4.4 trillion okay, that went in subsidies final, final isn't question. because they got campaign donations? You know it's because Chang. they got campaign Fin donations. Chang. Chang. Okay, final question. This is going to be the last word on this. Final thing here last on this, word. okay? Final question on this. So, Young Turks is super successful. We have 80 million uniques. It's, it's wonderful. Do you think Thank Bernie you. Sanders would care more if you gave him $10,000 or if you dedicated your entire network to kissing his ass for an election cycle? <laughs> A couple of highlights. Let's see the first one. If, if money was speech, well, then if you go to a hooker and you say, oh, no, uh, officer, I was just talking to her. OK, <laughs> money is not speech. Final point here. When you say money in politics is bad, again, I ask you, Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money. After all, it's just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? <laughs> It is every bit as bad as I thought it would be. Um, but that was pretty, I think it was substantial because he was trying, I wouldn't say getting personal, but again, trying to imply character flaws of manipulating elections and you flip that on him. So I think even when he was trying to present a somewhat cordial appearance that wasn't what was really happening, uh, for more proof, let's, let's go to another clip. Naki Jared, are we ready? Yep. All right, let's go to the clip. 
if you want to get money out of politics and then you said the Young Turks cannot donate money to politicians, I'd say, of course, that's the whole point of getting money out of politics. Young Turks is super successful. We have 80 million uniques. It's, it's wonderful. Do you think Thank Bernie you. Sanders would care more if you gave him $10,000 or if you dedicated your entire network to kissing his ass for an election cycle? <laughs> He didn't choose a thug life, but God chose his people. Uh, you said you, you just, you prepared for him. Some people take a different approach. With debates, it's just be generally prepared. Like, there are fighters who say, I never watch tape on my opponent. I just worry about me. Now, I've always uh, taken a different approach. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself anywhere in your league as far as debating, but we happen to have a lot of leftists in the show. I think you need a base level of being prepared for anything. You know, it's jack of all trades, master of one is the original term. And then watch tape to prepare as best as you can for this individual, especially someone like Shank who goes rogue. Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, I'd watched the last couple of debates. I always kind of scout out my opponents in debates. So I'd watched Chank's debates with uh, Ann Coulter, and then I watched his debate with Dinesh. And it seemed like it was the same tactic over and over, which was he would pull some quote from 10 years ago that somebody said, and then he would, and then he would say, well, I demand that you defend this. And then as soon as they start defending it, he would immediately swivel to crowd, like physically swivel to the crowd and then say, what he's really saying, he's racist, right? That, that, was, the, that was the routine. I, so I prepped for it like that was what was going to happen. Like, uh, like he was going to come after me, you know, with quotes that are 15 years old and try and take something out of context. And so I had, you know, with me, a, a stack of crap that was just like I, I was I was fully prepared. If he if he had gone low, then we would have talked Armenian genocide for an hour. That's now. what like, I was going to ask that was, you. That, that was my immediate follow up. Was Armenian genocide included? Yeah, I mean that, that there was definitely material there. If he had, if he had called me an Islamophobe, uh, I would have read quotes that he had stated about Islam back in two thousand five. Like I I really had prepped it, uh, and so I was ready to go. And I think two things sort of threw him off. One was that in the green room I was very cordial to him, but I don't think that would have mattered to him too much. I think that what really threw him off is that the last couple of times with Ann and with Dinesh, when he did those debates, there were. It was it was definitely a majority Young Turks Army room, right? I mean, it was definitely his people, uh, and so you can play to your people. When when your people are there, you play to them. When he walked out, I mean, first of all, the crowd that showed up for my town hall was supposed to be like 300 people. They didn't move the room because it was a thousand people who showed up. And then for the debate, they originally had it slated for a thousand person room, and 3,000 people showed up, and probably two thirds of them were people who were fans of the show. So that meant that he walked out and he got booed. And so I think in that moment, he realized, okay, if I go low and Shapiro hits me with Armenian genocide, it could, I mean, it could legitimately end my career. 